This is the Detroit Sports Podcast Network. Hey guys, it's Vito Churko here from the Detroit Sports Podcast Network. And on this special edition of the Detroit Sports Podcast, I had the chance to speak with L.A. Chargers defensive back, 2015 Jim Thorpe Award winner for the nation's top defensive back in college while at the University of Iowa, and that is Desmond King, who this Thursday had his jersey retired at Detroit East English, his number 20 uniform for his great career, which started at Detroit Crockett, which closed down and then merged with Detroit Finney High School to form East English Village Prep. And while at East English on Thursday, I had the chance to talk with Desmond as well as his head coach while at Crockett and East English in Rod Odin to talk about his career, what kind of impact he had on the program at Crockett and East English, and got the chance to chat with Desmond as well about his first career NFL interception that went for a pick six, how he predicted that would happen way back in 2017, talked about what it's like for him to play alongside fellow Detroit native Antonio Gates, the legendary future Hall of Fame tight end, and also we chatted about what he plans on doing after his pro football career ends. All of that and more, starting with Desmond King, followed by my chat with his former head coach at Detroit East English and Detroit Crockett, Rod Odin. So, Desmond, what did this jersey retirement ceremony mean to you? Just showing, you know, how blessed and honored I am here, you know, in the city of Detroit. And just being known for, like, all the hard work and dedication that I put into, you know, in my, in my process. You know, my process of from, uh, from the young age that I grew up to and, and just moving on to where I'm at now, you know. Without God, you know, I wouldn't be in this position. So, I, I thank him, you know, I honor him. Uh, you know, and, uh, and, uh, and I'm blessed to be in this position. What are your fondest memories of being at Crockett and then finishing up your football career, high school football career at East English? You know, just the tradition that we have, you know, at our school, you know. You know, we're a family. You know, that's one thing that we do. Once we get here, you know, we, we grind each and every day. You know, we have our ups and downs, but as one, you know, we stick together through anything. And that's, that's what we continue here at, at our high school, even at Detroit Crockett and here at East English Village now. You know, it's a tradition here. It's a family, and that's one thing that we stick through. How much do you owe your success as a football player to East English head man Rod Odin? Um, you know, just kind of how he shaped shaped my uh, capability and 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 how he rounded you know the whole team to to be together. And that that right there, you know, shows that you know he's a leader as well. So he wants he's raising more leaders in the community and on the team. You know, to go out there and do the best as we can. So Coach Odin spoke about it, too, before you got up there and spoke yourself about how you weren't heavily recruited by colleges. Has that motivated you throughout your football career and still to this day? Um, I mean, like, you know, it's kind of it's kind of just how my whole life was shaped. You know, I, I've been overlooked as a child, you know, as a kid, and, and I wasn't, you know, highly recruited in nothing, you know, just playing a little league. You know, I was the smallest guy out there, you know, not being recruited by, you know, top high schools, you know. So I went to Detroit Crockett, which was a small high school in the city of Detroit. They gave me the opportunity to, you know, go out there and, and show, display my capabilities and my abilities that I can play on the field. So on April 20th of last year, you tweeted out that your first career interception in the NFL would be a pick six. Crazy, because it happened. I mean, what made you believe that when you tweeted that out, but also doing it against the Dallas Cowboys, America's so-called team on Thanksgiving Day? Uh, how big of a moment was that for you as well to do it then on the national stage? I mean, for it to come true and for you to, you know, make it happen, you got to dream it. You got to believe it. That's one thing. If you can if you can dream it, then you can believe it. If you believe it, you can achieve it. You know, that's what I live by. And uh, it happened plenty of times. It happened plenty of times in my life. Um, I remember my sophomore, end of my sophomore year, going into my junior year of college, I said, you know, my goal is to be the top defensive back in the country. And following the next year, the junior year, I was the I was awarded the Jim Thorpe Award, and it was the best defensive back in the country, too. So, I mean, it happened before, so why not you know, take another shot at it for the NFL? You know, and like I said, if you can, if you can dream it, then you can believe it. If you can believe it, you can achieve it, so... You know, just keep God first, you know, everything is going to play out. What's it like playing alongside fellow Detroit native Antonio Gates with the Chargers? Uh, Gates is a, is, a, is a leader. That's one thing I can I can say for sure about Gates. He's a role model. You know, he's one of those guys that's coming from the city of Detroit himself that, that didn't play football in college. He was a basketball player. You know, he tried out for the NFL, and look at him now. He's, a, he's going to be a Hall of Fame tight end. You know, that shows, you know, the dedication and hard work and just believing in God that, you know, it, it can come true. Do you know what you want to do after football? I know it's a long ways away for you, but I know you, 
you graduated with a degree, two degrees, right, in African American yeah. studies, but also broadcast journalism. Would you like to be on ESPN yeah, or, or do you want to show maybe you and I maybe one day something like that? Definitely, definitely. You know, I'm looking forward to uh, being a sports analyst, you know, something like that. So, you know, I got a fellow teammate right now, Trey Boston, who works for NFL Network. So, you know, hopefully he can get me in the door and then I can finish the rest from there. Thank you much, man. Congratulations to once again. No problem. Thank you for having me. So what did this jersey retirement ceremony and the day mean to you and to this East English program, Coach? It means a lot to us to be able to celebrate our first uh, professional athlete, a kid that has earned it, a kid that has accomplished a lot in a very short time, you know, constantly overlooked, you know, the whole underdog thing. He is the epitome of what we encourage our guys to do every day. Don't worry about size, height, and weight. Just give your absolute best effort every day. So today is just a culmination of a celebration of him and the things he's accomplished thus far, and I'm just super excited to have him here. And you already kind of started talking about it, but what is his lasting legacy at Crockett, at East English? What would you say that is, Coach? He's a bridge builder. He's a guy that um, had blind faith in us as coaches to come over here and start a program from nothing. And like I said, that's rare for a guy to not choose to go to one of the traditional powers and join something that's already made. So I look at him as a pioneer, a front runner, a guy that is the architect of this program, and I want to make sure that they remember his name. After I'm gone, after he's gone, that tradition that we always talk about that never graduates. Thank you, Coach. Appreciate it. And that is all she wrote for this special edition of the Detroit Sports Podcast Network. Thanks to Desmond King and Rod Odin for joining me on this edition of the podcast. Have a great weekend, everybody. And I'll talk to you again this Saturday when the latest edition of Two Bad Hombres featuring Dave Burkett of the Detroit Free Press drops. Adios for now.